This is Banjo, and today I'm going over the SAU autopilot system, specifically in its command and automatic landing modes. In the example, I'll be landing at Kobyleti Air Base, which uses channel 15 of the PRMG system to receive ILS data. The SAU autopilot panel is located in front of the throttle, at the left of the radar altimeter. On the left and right, we can see the indicators for automatic and command landing modes, just to the left of the indicator for SAU stabilize. Above this, we have SAU reset, which will disable the current landing mode. As we have a look in the control bindings, we're able to see under category SAU, we have the bindings for landing command and landing auto modes, as well as cancel current landing mode, which is the SAU reset shown on the SAU autopilot panel. When landing the MiG-21, gear and flaps should come out at around 400, and airspeed should be kept above 350 below 400 for the landing. When automatic landing mode is engaged, altitude should be no lower than 1,000 meters to avoid pitch up on activation, and no higher than 1,000 to avoid negative G on activation. The PRMG system is placed into landing mode by moving the switch to the left of the gun sight into the lower position, and in landing mode, the flight director will give us glide slope information for the currently selected station. PRMG channels are selected on the panel to the left of the throttle with the left knob being RSBN navigation channels and the right knob being PRMG landing channels. In this example, I'll be navigating to and landing at Kobyleti, so I'll be tuning both to channel 15, which we can see in the RSBN caucuses page of the kneeboard. The RSBN PRMG system must be activated by placing the toggle switch behind the flaps panel in the upwards position. This will move it from ARC to RSBN, and we're able to hear the station's identifier code, and on the NPP, we can see the bearing to station dialing in. When the RSBN PRMG system is in navigation mode, we can see flight director data is drawn for the currently selected radial on the KPP. When it's moved to landing, it simply displays our offset to the glide slope. Finally, rate of descent will be handled automatically by the SAU landing system, as the system will command hold of both pitch and roll. The system is used down to minimums just at the inner beacon, so I'll be disabling it once I overfly the inner beacon, at which point I'll handle my descent and bring it closer to zero, just prior to touchdown. RPM throughout the procedure will remain most likely above 80-85%, as it takes a bit of throttle to maintain power on a landing. For the first example, I'll be going over automatic landing mode of the SAU autopilot system. At this point, we're just prior to the turn on to final. So I'll locate the airbase and turn into it, being sure to keep my altitude around 1,000 meters. As I do, I'll switch the system into landing mode so that I'm able to detect the moment the glide slope is detected by the system. Which can be indicated by the jump that the flight director on the ADI will receive all of a sudden, as it suddenly detects the glide slope. As the system detects and displays the glide slope, I'll note the offset, maneuver the aircraft to bring its altitude and lateral alignment as close as I can to the glide slope, as the aircraft can bank quite hard, pitch, or pull negative G, depending on how far off the glide slope it is when the system is activated. At this point, I activate the automatic landing mode, indicated by the audible click heard one moment ago. At this point, bank and pitch are handled by the system automatically, with my only remaining input being throttle. So at this point, I simply need to monitor the process, be sure that I don't break alignment with the glide slope, which would cause the system to be disabled, and I monitor my airspeed, keeping it above 350 below 400. As this does go on for quite a while, I'll make a series of cuts in this video, and we'll see it a bit accelerated. You may be able to note that the system doesn't hold a perfect alignment with the glide slope. It is quite the old system, so it will become more accurate as it gets closer to the station. While out at ranges, we can see it sways a bit from side to side as it gets onto alignment, unless you had it perfectly on glide slope at the time of activation. But provided the system was activated within a degree or two of glide slope, even in the worst visibility, it will get you down to minimums, regardless of a bit of sway from side to side. At this point, as I overfly the inner beacon, I disable the SAU landing mode and land the aircraft by hand as the system will guide you down to the center of the airbase at a high rate of descent, so you will need to land it manually. As the system will not auto-land you, it will simply guide your aircraft through approach down to minimums. With the aircraft safely landed, at this point for the next example, I'll demonstrate the command mode. 
this next example, we've navigated to the approach for Kobe Lady Airfield. So switch the RSBN PRMG system into landing mode and activate command mode. In command mode, everything works as it did in automatic mode, though the only difference, and the most noticeable difference, is that the pilot retains control of the aircraft. The flight director will display the input that it would have flown on automatic mode, and now it's up to the pilot whether or not he flies that input. We can see it's trying to get me to bank left. Throughout the process, both the flight director on the ADI as well as its glide slope localizers will display the input needed to fly the glide slope to land at the airfield. It's up to the pilot whether or not he follows through on this. In this particular example, I come in pretty much holding the glide slope down to about 250 meters, at which point I start coming in more shallow than the system's calling for. As I overfly the outer beacon, this is at about the point where I start sinking away from the glide slope a bit, and we'll see as the localizer starts climbing, indicating that I should climb the aircraft to stay on. At this point, as we overfly the inner beacon, in the last example, I would have disabled the automatic mode. Though in command mode, there is really no point to take your concentration away from what you're doing, as you still retain control over the aircraft. The system shares no benefit over the automatic mode, although in comparison to manual flying, it gives you the added flight director input, as well as the glide slope localizers. When the system is engaged outside of its limitations, in this case, at about twice the altitude, 2,000 meters, we can see as it pulls a sustained 0G in an effort to get on glide slope, and then breaks free of glide slope, cancelling out the system, although not before flaming out the engine. So at this point, we can see why it's important to be well within the limitations of the system, so within a degree or two of the glide slope, before activating the automatic mode.